up. Stop knocking. Go away. I'm busy. That's how I used to speak to my mother. And now for the last time, I'll stick a needle into my arm. Uh, I didn't want to listen when Nikki tried to warn me about what she was selling me. And she was trying to keep me awake, but I'm junkie. I mean, junkies always know better. The next thing, I'm on the carpet, on the floor, with a, a syringe and with a needle in my arm, and the paramedic, and I'm coming out of it, and I ask what's wrong, and the paramedic assures me that I'm not dead. Yet. Coming uh, As I go to hospital, I go in and out of consciousness, and coming out of it, there's a nurse standing next to my bed. She's crying. She's crying because I told her my life story. Not that I think it's that damn sad anyway. With so much unwitnessed destruction in South Africa, I decide to take a journey to see what I could do to change things for the better in my country. By starting with the root of most of the crime in the country, addiction. It was discovered in the late 1960s by Howard Lotsoff that Ibogaine, a hallucinogenic substance found in the root of the West African plant Iboga, can interrupt a heroin addiction without withdrawal symptoms. The plant has a place in African ritual and traditional healing. It has only recently been introduced to Western medicine and is becoming popular in drug rehabilitation clinics around the world. The stigma of death surrounds it. My name is Pierre Leroux and I'm going to find the truth behind the boga. I have registered a rehab called the Alternative Rehab. Using the Ibogaine treatment, I will attempt to rehabilitate a hardcore heroin addict. I'm going to start looking for one in Vitbank. I have heard that Vitbank in Mapumalanga has the highest density of heroin addicts in South Africa. I want to see it for myself. The community seems like they had enough. A drug problem, they don't buy sugar, they don't buy meat. They just, when you tell them you must walk nicely, just sleeping. When you tell him you must uh, make nice things, he just tell you gonna kill you. When you get the money, just walk and buy, or the whole day gonna buy, buy, buy this thing. When this you, This nyao. When you tell him, hey, don't buy nyao, he say, don't tell me. It's, it's my lung, it's, it's right. It's my life. And, and my friend, here in South Africa, eh? a white man like you, eh? uh, is don't smoke nyao, it's just use injection, right through a chofa. A chofa, In a bed pump, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's serving long time, my friend. If you're sitting here and you've got a drug lord that operates here every day, you've got Lizzie's Fantasy Land here, just down the road, about 500 meters from this park. And then black people are smoking in the open. You know, my friend, and this is wrong. So all these ladies here, they are all part of this. Um, all go to this house. Um, crime, heroin crime headquarters. This um, dilapidated house over here. That is, that is what's going on here. Right, I can't stop. I can imagine. This park is a well-known user's hotspot. I've heard of people dying in the area. The problem is uh, people here is just smoking this shit. Uh, always when he's smoking the shit, uh, he's just sleeping and go. You know, and uh, this is shit. And when he's smoking, it's just steal the spoons, steal everything. It's just big crime here in South Africa. Yeah, the, this drug is causing a plenty problems because this this guy don't want to work and they are causing a problem hijacking people doing a bad things always always the people are afraid to, to stop on, on the stop street 
Uh, they look at me. I smoke peach every day. Peach makes me feel better when I'm smoking. You see, I've got a problem of aloster. You know what is the aloster? When you don't smoke, ne? when you wake up at the early in the morning, you find your body is tired. Uh, you must smoke now and then, because if you are not smoking, if you're not smoking, ne? You, your blood it stops. And we've approached the police, we've approached the designated police officials, and they all shrug their shol uh, shoulders. We've been dealing with drug abuse, or, or what people label addiction now. Uh, I see it as a, as a much more simple problem. I see, all the, see it as a failed coping mechanism. I see people as having a response to trauma, and a, and a way of trying to cope with this trauma and it can be socially acceptable or socially unacceptable as with drugs. To be honest with you, it's sold illegally into the system. There is no system. You're dealing with Africans. I did a lot of advertising around the area and eventually I got a call from Marcel who said his brother needed help. A week later I picked up my first addict and left for the mountains. Our client still had his kit on him. Die naweek is glad nie wat ek verwag het nie. Hulle sê, is al alternative rehab. Ek het, ek het glad nie enig iets as dit verwag. My naam is Peter James. Ek kom van Witbank af. Ek is nou al so 3,5 jaar verslaaf aan die toon. Ek het nou iets niets probeer en toe het net nie ja. My broer is baie goed vir my. My ma, sy is ook daar vir my, sy ondersteun my daarom nog. Waar die ander mense nou my helemaal afgeskryf het. Hey, ons bekke eind ek sê nie, ons volk vir een mooie plek van die kamp. Ja, goed sê sê, goed sê sê. Ik is nogal eens opgewonden voor vandaag. Ik ga in doen maar wat is het? Dus werkt het? Ik kan niet wachten om te zien wat gaat gebeuren. Ik maar een keer toch je wil bij vies. Ja, hij gaat verder. Dat is al water. Ja. We hebben een beetje tijd schiet, nee? Ja, ik zie nooit nog. Peter showed no signs of withdrawal or hysteria, normally associated with heroin withdrawal. I told Peter that his approach to life should be like target practice. Aim and take action. Then I handed him my gun. Aim. Ik heb gehoord dat het op Shay raakt. Ik heb al een clip raak geschiet. Ik ben nog altijd verbaasd. Hier is ook geen werk nog altijd goed. Man. Gewoontelijk in hierdie tijd, je weet, ik wakker word in die ochtend. Dan onttrek ik al klaar, erg. Dan heb ik al klaar begin om een plan uit te denken, je weet, om hier te krijgen voor die dag. Maag is ongekrapt, benen is seer en die rug is seer. Is niet alles. En is ik nou nie, je weet, plan kan maak vir genoeg daai nie dier die dag kan ek glad nie slaap nie hoor dit is vir my dit is vir my die ergste hoor yes. nee, ek het nou al een paar keer getraai op hoor, maar elke keer is dit maar die onttrekking so wat my terugkijk ja, dit is vies, so draak, so tome, so. Ja, so draak rarig erg begin voel, dan kan ek nie meer nie dan maak ek nou maar een plan so ek denk as ek nou net eers by die onttrekking sê, dan verder, jy weet, die mindset is recht, so ek behoor het voel kan. Ek 
boer erachter wees. Dit hoeft niet te komen meer nie. Dit is niet meer lekker. Het lekker maar het is niet lekker. Ja, het is niet lekker. After Peter told us about his struggles with his addiction, we decided to gather our things and leave for the mountains. But not before we had a good South African breakfast. Things were going so well with Peter. I decided I wanted to fly to Cape Town to meet an infamous ethno practitioner. My name is Simon Luxton. I'm a registered ethnomedicine practitioner. I'm registered with IPASA, which is a government organization. I specialize in iboga, or ibogaine, which is the alkaloid or plant salt derived from the iboga plant. All of that, that's kind of up to you. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, these are all several stages. So you can call it a kind of a university of the forest. I was very interested in psychedelics growing up in my late teens and early twenties, but uh, I could never really find out Bogo or, or people that were interested enough in it to, to speak to me about it. And then uh, my interest kind of fell away from our Bogo and psychedelics. And uh, it was after working as a tattoo artist that I decided to take a break for a while, um, just because I thought I had certain personality issues that needed taking care of and uh, I thought it was mainly because of uh, you know, substance related issues. Uh, I gave up drugs and, and alcohol for a year and then I realized that it actually wasn't the, the, the drugs or alcohol, it was uh, deep-seated personality defects. The only problem was that I didn't know where the, where the issues came from and I couldn't remember uh, specific situations and then that's when I our burger started coming up again. I wanted to uh, get into doing our burger, as I was saying, because of the personality issues that uh, that I had. And um, in the beginning, it was a bit difficult getting information. I wasn't sure what what was true and what was untrue, whether to use the the plant itself or an extract. I managed to get a contact, a call from um, a guy in Johannesburg who had been practicing Bwiti for a while and he wanted to know uh, if I'd been interested in Iboga and if I'd be interested in coming up to Johannesburg. On the, the, the traditional side is, is mainly to do with the, uh, ingesting the root bark. You, you have to eat about a plateful of the root bark and it's, it's really, really bitter. What you see during your experience is very personal. So. Uh, the experience lasts about two, three days. You get a direct, um, you get insight into your own behavior from someone else's perspective. And it's also very common to, to experience the emotions uh, that somebody else experienced. So let's say you, you had an argument with someone. It would be very common for, during the, the Art Burger experience, to experience things from that person's perspective, what they saw, how they felt how they felt afterwards. One thing I can say about Iboga, where a difference differs from uh, other psychedelics is that you're, you're not hallucinating on Iboga and although you are a bit more sensitive to light and sound, you're more audio and photosensitive it uh, creates a waking REM state, so you, you're dreaming while you're awake. Simon is not quite what I expected, but he gave me some insight on how he got involved in the ethno-healing industry. 
I wonder how Peter is doing. Is Peter dreaming while he's awake? After some target practice and a little bit of ibogain root bark, Peter had something to eat. Eber decided that they needed to take a swim for spiritual as well as physical yeah. cleansing. I really just wanted to see if they would do it. The water was too cold to properly plunge in, so Ebert and Peter preferred looking for crabs. Dus daar, hier die kant, zouden plekken. Hier zoals die laatste in. En dan tik nog twee, een daar en een daar. Ja, dat is daarom net zo drie of vier, dat is niet erg, nee. Nee, dat is baie jare se volk in. Baie jare se traks. Ja. En baie van my aarde het al begin plaatval, soos hier die boe. Van te veel volk in spuit. Tja, ja. Sien dit maar. Ja, ja, dit is so weer van die sy. Dit was nou bykie rol vir die laaste tijd. Peter seemed like he had made up his mind. Next, I go to Kempton Park in Johannesburg to meet a clinic owner. My name is Kevin Walker. I'm a natural health practitioner and uh, I've been dealing with Ibogaine since uh, 2006 uh, to date and uh, we're now in January of 2014 um, and I've probably helped uh, in the vicinity of about 6700 patients with Ibogaine over the last uh, years. What one needs to understand is that Ibogaine is not a magic bullet. Whilst, whilst it is an excellent medium for taking a person from zero to hero within 24 hours and that's why it's of paramount importance that the, the, the patient in itself needs to remain in a controlled environment. The patient still needs to put in work but it's that much easier for the patient to go through and, uh, and um, start a new life, a clean life, a life of um, prosperous uh, if you know a future and a stable stable environment yes and what ibogaine tends to do is it, it's it, 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 these are in little boxes and once you've ingested ibogaine this subconscious is naturally more acute or more aware and then you've also got the the, the subconscious which tends to open all those deep rooted thoughts of maybe the way you were raised as a kid or something like that all those little boxes tend to open and I almost call it a defragmentation really of the brain. Very similar to a computer. When your, your system jams on a computer, you go and you defragment drive your hard drive. What I began is doing is really defragmentizing your brain because it takes all of these good points, this point, this point, this point, whatever these points might be, 
and then collates it. So, but once you start collectively putting the sky together and the grass together and the little tractors and you finish the whole puzzle, suddenly you've got this farmyard. That's exactly what Ibogaine does. Ibogaine transfers that, that mixed up mind back into a clearer picture. I began a, a holistic healing experience because it takes care of, of, of a number of uh, issues uh, pertaining to addiction, of course, and uh, that is uh, the, the body in that uh, when you're on Ibogaine, you don't suffer with, with these withdrawals, these acute withdrawals that uh, people normally associate to any opiate addiction, to heroin addiction, uh, to things like that. Uh, there are many different avenues at looking at Ibogaine. And uh, the, the problem with this is that the, the connotation uh, surrounding Ibogaine per se is that it's a psychedelic drug. In, in the early 60s with Howard Lotzoff, these people used it as a psychedelic experience and it has actually carried the or been associated to things like LSD and, and so forth because these are also psychedelic drugs. So, so what happens is that it's, 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 it's put it into a box, that box being psychedelics, but and it hasn't been removed from that box in, into, into a new box so to speak that, that is now medicine that can be utilized for an addiction. That's the problem with Ibogaine. There's, the, the, there are amazing properties that can be um, uh, that can come from this this plant. Uh, in that it does help with healing. It has helped people with with uh, social problems um, in, in different areas. So it's a good all rounder in a, in a sense of, of not only helping the person with an addiction, it helps them through that as well, where it gives them a better frame of mind, it gives them the avenues and, and it gives them a very good grounding for a better life thereafter on how to change and that it's possible to change because the cleaning process is that much quicker. In South Africa there are no legal avenues and there are no illegal avenues. Uh, at one stage there was uh, some research that was done via uh, UCT in the Cape and uh, the Medicine Control Council and so forth and to be quite honest with you I think they've merely shifted it underneath the, the, the carpet um, they haven't put much focus on it as such. We as Ibogaine South Africa, Ibogaine African Renaissance and Ibogaine Research Foundation um, try to overlook that scenario and we try to get it legalized under an African uh, ethnomedicine uh, scenario and uh, with that we, we joined up with IPASA, um, the South African uh, National, um, uh, what would you call it, control for African medicine um, and with that we utilize it in this country. As far as a, a medicine in, in, uh, per se, it's not legalized by the Control Council, the, the Medicine Controlled Council that is, although it should be. Kevin surely inspires me with his passion for rehabilitation. I think it's very nice to see some CBT. Not so that you sit and rest up this year, before it comes now on the way. Back in the mountains, Peter is still not showing any signs of withdrawal. He is full of energy and wants to explore the cliffs in the area. After exploring the cliffs, we went to a nearby guest house where we could rest for the second night of Peter's detox on safari with us.
En dan elke keer als ik net piekje slag begin voelen, vat ik net weer een klein beetje hierboog in. Maar je moet net geplaat, je weet, om te gaan voor die treatment. Ik moet net gewaar, ik ga net werk of niet, je weet. Maar, en, ja. Zal maar zien, na, na die naweek zal ik het maar één dag op de slag vat, hè. Peter seemed relieved that he was not going through withdrawal. I am also surprised. He then eats another gram of iboga root bark and then we all retire for the night. About a month after Peter's detox, a colleague from work contacted me and wanted help. We are on our way to Pretoria. My name is Matthew Brink. Um, I had some surgery on my thumb and I was in severe pain, so my doctor gave me these oxynorms, which is an opioid, Schedule 6. The pharmacy and I've been taking them now for the last two months so I decided to try and get off them but now it's a bit difficult you know it's the withdrawal withdrawal typical withdrawal like from opiates sore body sore joints sore head sore everything so we're gonna go get some ibogaine to try and relieve these withdrawal symptoms from the opioids from the prescription drugs. Weet je wel leuk? Ibugai. De Ibugai root baat. Het is een Het is een groot doos. Doos is. Het is een doos of Ibugai. Het is voor that, that lovely feeling. It went off. Tastes like shit. Tastes like shit. Tastes like eating wood. So dust. Very sad. It's just a mental anticipation of mellowness. That's what it's supposed to do. It seems to me Matthew is feeling the first effects, but I don't know if so little ibogaine is going to relieve as much pain as he thinks it will. It's actually yellow right in all fact. That's no two years old with the sonar tires. Okay, full of like yellow right. It gaat denk ik gewoon weet op een vloer leen ruk. Weet een track en alles. Dan kan je vaker geworden voor ochtend en het voel in klik is een nieuwe mens. Verbazen. Ik heb gisteravond nu die lekkerste voeken aan te slapen gehad wat ik al een lang tijd gehad heb. Yes. Ik heb heel al, ik heb maar één keer gisteravond wakker geworden. Met een beetje, een beetje afwerk gevoel. Toen kreeg ik maar nog zo'n beetje ibogaine bij die jaar. Ik weet niet waarna te slaap ik heel aan hier. So, ik voel eigenlijk heel al uit van ochtend. Ik heb nu wakker geworden, koffie gedronken. 
Ik heb een trein nog niks meer. Ja, dat is raar. Dat is raar. Dat is raar. Then the most amazing thing happens. My brother dropped in from Cape Town. He also wanted to try the African medicine. This is his story. My name is Don and I'm a addict. I'm not an addict. This is for another work, man. Maybe um. Dus die dag die grootste verslaan. Ik heb net een beetje van die diabuig gegeet. Ik kan al lang een dag geruiken. Een groot probleem. Of een jaar. Dit was nooit een probleem nie. Nou, hier was gelijk als ik het. Nou, hier heb ik de joint gezien. Nou, wil ik gebruik. Als ik niet joint gezien, nou, is ik niet een probleem nie. Dan denk ik dat je altijd van, kom ons gaan kopen joint. Ja. So, ja. Ik heb naar jou bal komen die om nooit weer te denken aan dat gaan. Ja, dat is Dat is wat pas, ja. Die naweek is glad niet wat ik verwacht heb. Dat is een al alternatief rehab. Ik heb het, het glad niet en nog iets is dit verwacht. Ik heb ons het vrijdag weggetrekt aan de bank. We hebben niet eens precies geweten waar we ons rijden. <laughs> maar ons het op een baie lekker plek opgeëind op vrijdagavond. We zijn lekker gekampt en het is baie genoeg. Um, Zaterdagochtend. Uh, ik heb het, het hier heel erg slecht gevoel, maar ik heb het eigenlijk baie goed gevoel. En ons het maar, je weet, de hele dag, zaterdag, maar net een van dag gehad hier. We net rondgereden. Een paar goeities gedoen, het was bij het dam, het was baie lekker geweest. Ik was toen nog gestrand, die oor geslaap en Machado door. door. En, yes, ek het gisteren aand, ek het actually een lekker aand sy slaap in gehad. Gewoontlik kan ek glad nie slaap, as ek nie met my heroin in het nie, maar ek het gestrand, erg lekker geslaap. En ik voel nu volgen tussen nieuwe mensen. Ik heb niks onttrekkings, niks niet. En ik heb nog niet eens Ibo Gain gevat. Nie. Ik heb nog niks gehad. Nie. Maar ik voel daarom. Ik voel die heel Ik krijg niks onttrekkings, nie. niks. Ja, en nu hoor ik voor hier zijn tijd gaan ons. Zit hem maar terug aan de toe. Zo gelijk het om nog, nog langer aan te blijven maken. Ik moet zeker maar eens toe gaan. <laughs> Kijk, als ik nu bij die huis kom, ik denk ik ga maar niet zo so ver als mogelijk weg blijven van, van die heroïne af. En je nog iemand wat geassocieerd wordt met heroïne, ik ga maar ver blijven. Ver weg blijven af en af, je weet. Want ik ga niet weer relaps. Nie. Het is nou raar, ik is, is moeg voor je goed. Ja, dit, dit was lekker geweest in die begin, maar na ruk, en dan, dan raak het net niet meer lekker nie, weet. Dan doe je het omdat je het moet doen, want je onttrek en of zo aan. Zo, so, dus, so, die, die laatste paar maanden is ik zo so gehad voor Vero en ik heb het maar net gevat omdat ik altijd onttrek. Ja. So, nou, ja. ek denk nou, nou as ek terugkom in Witbank, ek, ek sal al raad hier so. Maar my airbike vaat, die weet. Maar van vooraf begin. Maar weer in het nieuwe leven opbouw. Weet, weer ordentelijke vrienden krijgen. Ja, so misschien wel een dag kan ook. Maar ek glo, ek glo dinge sal vir my baie goed gaan. Ja, Want ek, ek voel great so. Ek glo, ja, ek voel erg great so. Ek seker dinge gaan vir my nou. Dit gaan vir my werk. En ek is raar nog verbaas in hierdie Ibo game. Dit is niks wat ek, jy weet, ek het dit glad nie verwaag nie, maar dit werk hoor. Yes. I told Peter during his experience to find a power totem. He found this piece of bone. It is an ox tail segment. I hope it keeps him on track.
Peter arrived home. His brother was waiting and glad to see him. He seemed skeptical and amazed all at once. I kept in contact with them on a weekly basis. Peter struggled with sleep for about three weeks. Then it normalized. It wasn't easy. It is now almost nine months later and Peter is still clean and going strong. Hey. I don't know, we need help, please people help. Ah, so Mela Maku Mela Zame, he plan of which he must just try a plan to to make a medicine. Yeah, sure. It's illegal in the States and several other countries. We need to we need to get Ibu game to fix our people. I say goodbye to my brother and can only hope he finds some resolution in the days to come. Driving that train. Hi, on the Yes, Joe Matthew's withdrawal pains went away slightly, but his hands still hurt. He was disappointed. I guess Ibogaine can't heal all. Matthew thinks he should have had a stronger dose. It truly turned out to be an Ibogain safari after all. But I cannot help to think of the number of people out there that still needs help. If it's your child or someone's child you know, does it really matter how they get saved? What I think should be known is that Ibogaine is not a walk in the park. It's a, a serious a decision that the patient needs to make. And uh, coupled, coupled with that is that Ibogaine is not just for everybody. Um, you have to be, uh, A, you have to be ready to, to, to go into a walk. Understand, like I said earlier on in the program, that Ibogaine uh, is not a magic bullet. So you have to be treatment ready. Ik kan niet wachten om te zien wat gaat gebeuren.